Hello Booktube, I'm Peg and welcome to my channel. It's kind of rainy here today, uh, but at least being outside is better than being inside. So if it blows through the screen, I'll uh, have to uh, curtail this, but so far I'm still dry. Um, I'm going to be leaving just a little over two weeks for Sean the Book Maniac's wedding and I am so excited. Uh, probably more excited than him, though I think he's pretty excited to hear him talk. Uh, I, as you, if you've been watching my channel, you know that for <laughs> seems like half a year, I've been working on uh, knitting a rainbow uh, wedding blanket for him, uh, the, the uh, symbol of gay pride and unity, and it's come out so well. Thanks so much for all the support I got as I made my seven, 72,000 stitches in it. It was really fun. Um, I, I have finished, and I'm real pleased with it, but I decided I'm not going to show the finish project until uh, Kenji and Sean see it and I'll of course have a picture with them in it and uh, show you here. Um, so uh, did you see Sean's um, video just the other day uh, I had asked him about some books I could read about Saskatchewan in Canada where I'm going where he's getting married and he made a great video with all kinds of wonderful suggestions on it and I ordered quite a few of them. Most of them aren't available in the library here but they are available at used book sites so I ordered quite a few of them and I'm and I'm uh, uh, while I'm waiting for them to arrive I'll, I wanted to kind of show you some books that I had found on my own that have to do with Canada or give the feeling of Saskatchewan uh, so, I'll, so I'll go into that now uh, the first one I actually read several years ago uh, when I was into reading longer books it's called The Dying Grass and it's by William Volman now uh, if you haven't you probably heard of William Volman. He is what I would call a maximalist writer. <laughs> Everything he writes is tomes. Um, he, this is part, this is nonfiction, this is part of his Seven Dream series, which is, is a series of, of big books examining the collisions between Native Americans and uh, European settlers uh, in different parts of, of North America. And this one deals with the Nez Perce Indians in, uh, in uh, Montana, northern Montana, Oregon, Montana, and, and then they go up into Canada. And it's about a trip through all these as the Indians are fleeing their I guess their f famous legendary chief was called Chief Joseph and they were fleeing and w there was a American army uh, colonel after him and his group was after him and it is so well done it gets really into the landscape and the atmosphere just the kind of feeling I wanted to get for the upper mid Midwest and uh, to start me out and I just I love the prairie look the prairies and everything and I'm hoping to see some of those when I go to Saskatoon uh, maybe we might get to go out to Sean's uh, parents farm one day and I I really look forward to the ride on that okay just a little bit more about William Volman he's really a favorite author of mine though I haven't read a lot of his books he's mainly a nonfiction writer but he actually won the Fiction Award, National Book Fiction Award, I, about 10 years ago for a, another tome he wrote called Europe, European Central or Europe Central. Um, and it was about things in the Second World, in the Second World War. And uh, so it's very unusual that a mainly nonfiction writer would not only write a fiction book but would win you know the national book award for it um, I'm not sure I don't think he's written he just writes a lot and they're all so big but I wanted to tell you he has just recently this year in fact published uh, a two volume series on, on uh, global warming and our, our uh, uh, use of uh, non-renewable non supplies and um, 
each of these 600 pages, it's a two-volume series, they're called the uh, Carbon Ideologies, and you can see they have pictures of nuclear plants and, and uh, uh, smog-polluting plants. And I read some of them, and if I had time, I mean, it's written well. It's not boring reading at all. He interviews all kinds of different people, goes to Japan where the nuclear accident happened, and, and really goes into there. and. Uh, if I wasn't so busy reading other stuff, I'd like to read it. But um, I have to tell you, there's one excellent review I read on it <coughs> by one of our uh, pro professional book reviewers. And guess who is the guy that was able to read all 1,200 pages right by, before it was even published and review it? Yeah, that's right. It's our Steve Donahue. He put, has an excellent review in his uh, on in his on his uh, monitor Christian Science Monitor site. Um, I I take a subscription, but I think you can probably watch look at the book reviews um, without a subscription. And you can, and he wrote a really well done well his are well done of course uh, review on it. So, okay, that's William Volman. Uh, has anybody out there read any William Volman? If so, let me know. Okay, okay. Uh, now, these are other things that, about Canada. Sean had mentioned in his uh, video, which I'll give a link to in case you happen to miss it, with his great uh, Canadian literature suggestions, um, an actual one of the most famous uh, Canadian authors called Guy Vanderheide. Um, and he's still living. He's, um, well, I don't think he's too old anyway, but he, uh, Sean mentioned he had read a short story book by him, and I uh, was found uh, that he had written a trilogy. Not, they call it a trilogy, but it's not the same characters, and it doesn't have to be read in any order. But the first one evidently published was The Englishman's Boy. And this actually takes place in the 1920s, uh, where Hollywood is 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 doing a Western picture out there, and they and they meet a, a, one of the guys supposedly uh, was in one of the uh, last massacres that that happened, and they get I, I haven't read it, but um, it, this is the one that has won the most prizes. It won the Governor General's award for uh, fiction. And um, as it says here, this is it won different ones, the Giller and the Dublin Literary Award. So I need to get to that next. But the one I have read is called The Last Crossing. Now this took place earlier in the 1800s um, and had to do with, uh, uh, it starts out in, in Montana at uh, Fort Benton, which is on the Missouri River there and used to be a big big port, and um, it starts out there in, in the 1800s with a, uh, some Englishmen, an Englishman has disappeared, and his brothers come over from England, and they try to get up this group to go and hunt for him up in Canada in Saskatchewan. So the story is about these characters and their uh, trip um, on horseback. The, it ends up being a bigger group, and it's so well done. The characters are really well done, and the action scenes are are great. There's a bear hunting scene that's really good, and one this one chilling scene when they go into this Indian village that has been decimated by smallpox, and uh, how, you know it just gives me a really good feel of the history that's taken place in this part of the of Canada, the upper upper Midwest. Okay, so let's see. On with uh, Canadian authors or, or books about Canada. Uh, Sean had also mentioned uh, Wallace Stegner, which I've been reading this summer anyway. I've declared him my new favorite or to be read author. Uh, and this book, interesting cover that it's not really mashed up, that's the cover. It's called Big Rock Candy Mountain. It's one of his earlier ones, and it involves this uh, couple, this man and the woman they meet at the first, and they spend 30 years like wandering around the uh, upper Midwest there, and there is supposedly a scene, which I haven't got to yet, that takes place right there in Saskatchewan, and I, I think he must be real familiar with that area anyway, because in the book Sean recommended, 
something wolf, willow something anyway I, I had that one on order uh, it takes place in a small town where Sean's grandparents also lived and uh, he thinks they must have known each other so that's really interesting okay so let's see that's it for, for I, as I said I ordered quite a few of the books that he recommended so I'll be back to talk about those as soon as they start arriving um, I have to say I've uh, already made a contact that will of another book lover that will be at the wedding. Um, people, Sean asked for any suggestions on, on more novels uh, for me about Saskatchewan and there was one particular lady that wrote in with some great suggestions and it was a long, long story but we kind of made contact with each other and uh, she suggested quite a few really interesting ones to me and I'll be able to talk to her at the at Sean's dinner pre post wedding dinner because Sean is putting all the book lovers at the same table won't that be fun <laughs> not that I have a hard time talking to people anyway but it will be great to have, meet all his book lover friends he'll probably wish he could sit at our table okay so let's see uh, this the next thing I want to talk about is the Booker Prize, which was announced yesterday. Now you know I used to be the Book Prize addict and follow every every uh, Book Prize that came out, and I had said I wasn't going to do this this year because, quite truthfully, it seemed like the uh, books kept being the same books for every prize and not ones I really liked that much, and I just kind of got tired of it. So I vowed I'm not going to pay attention this year uh, but of course I watched in fact there was a leak and uh, it was supposed to be at midnight London time which would have been seven here and about noon I was watching Twitter and there was a, a leak actually through the Guardian so you can see them all and the neat thing is now yeah you probably do know what's on them by now and Carl Eric Eric Carl Anderson just right away put out a great uh, video this morning with his thoughts about all of them and he he has most of them um, of the 13 five of them I've read and the other eight I've never even heard of so I was really drawn into this I have to I said I have to watch I have to read these so I ordered the ones that I could two of them aren't even published and um, re got re put the ones on the hold from the library that are in the library and then I, I have two of them here uh, I did uh, read this previously uh, by Don Donal Donal it's called I was told Ryan um, and but I want to read it again because I've got a new plan for how I'm going to judge books I've been reading some books on how to critique and judge books um, and and I've gotten some ideas from it and what I've done for each of the books I'm going to set up a, a table with five different categories like plot character setting writing quality and writing quality and enjoyment is the last one and each of those gets five points or you know whatever or, or whatever out of five points so the best possible would be 25 and that'll separate the books a little more than just giving them you know threes fours or fives and I plan to go through the list we'll see I have a long time the short list doesn't come out till September so you guys might, might want to try reading some of them too but I thought I'd use my new grading system on it and and that will help me to look at the different aspects of the novels too to, to be guarding looking on those things okay the, the other one I already have but of course I'll be reading again with these this criteria in mind is uh, the overstory uh, the two I'm picking up back up from the library are the Mars room and warlike I read them both but it'll be completely different to read them keeping these things in mind and one of the one I am so excited about come on here what's going on is I can't believe it there is actually a mystery an English mystery on the list by Belinda Bauer who is one of my favorite mystery authors uh, so this should be good and I'm going to the library right now I had them hold it and it's there and I'm going to go right now and start this one and read it so I'll be back with reports on these I uh, hope some of you all are going to read the list too especially since there's some new ones 
and it's not the same old ones. Okay, bye. Talk to you later.